Greetings, Culture Warriors. It is I, Jeff Fiera, the author of Culture is Everything, and your host for this latest dispatch from the front. This story by Lori Konish from MSN.com. Young workers at risk of financial exhaustion due to coronavirus pandemic. The economic uncertainty brought on by the coronavirus has spared no generation of American workers, but a recent survey found that young professionals could be bearing the brunt of the financial stress. One big consequence of that pressure is burnout, with 85% of young Americans reporting they feel pushed to the limit in at least one area when it comes to their jobs, managing their finances, studying, or social media, according to a recent survey from TD Ameritrade. They're just starting off and trying to get their footing in general, said Molly Pesentino, Senior Specialist of Retirement and Annuities at TD Ameritrade. Now there's an additional setback with the coronavirus. About one in three young Americans reported that they have been laid off or put on temporary leave, TD Ameritrade found. The numbers are particularly stark for members of Gen Z, ages 15 to 22, who are almost three times more likely to be laid off than their older counterparts. One reason is that younger workers are more likely to work in service positions. Meanwhile, 63% of young Americans are worried that they will lose their jobs versus 52% of Americans overall. TD Ameritrade survey focused on young Americans ages 15 to 29 and was conducted online between February and April. Since that time, the economy has struggled to reopen amid rising coronavirus case numbers in some parts of the country. Meanwhile, Congress has struggled to agree on additional stimulus relief. The tasks that caused the most financial burnout according to survey respondents, are saving and budgeting, likely due to the more limited cash flow many are experiencing. That was followed by car maintenance, shopping for insurance, investing, managing, and paying for student loans, retirement planning, or splitting bills with friends or roommates. Meanwhile, a majority of young Americans said they are living like they are broke rather than above their means. That goes for 62% of Gen Z, 59% of young millennials, And hey, nobody cares about Gen X or the baby boomers anyway, so nothing was reported there. With both generations feeling frazzled by their short-term financial needs, that means long-term planning falls by the wayside. More than half of the respondents agreed with the statement, just thinking about retirement makes me feel burned out. Millennial women in particular are most likely to feel that they don't know where to start with retirement planning. The survey found one key to combating this is to remember that there are resources to help you with planning, whether it be a professional money coach or the budgeting app, Pasentino said. This is not something you need to do alone, she added. If you need help, there's plenty of resources that you can get for your specific situation. Ah, well, that explains. I had wondered why Pasentino, who is a specialist of retirement and annuities, um, was being quoted in the article having no particular uh, expertise with regard to what young Americans are doing. Uh, When you take a look at annuities, annuities are paid into in order to provide an income stream later in life, particularly post-retirement. The intent, you can can fund an immediate annuity that would give you um, income straight away, but that's typically done by people who win lotteries and that sort of thing, or have a large amount of money left to them uh, in a bequest from an estate. So it's not really the norm. Most annuities are done for retirement. So should young people be building annuities now for retirement 30, 40 years from now? Probably not. Probably not the best advice. There are um, retirement asset, uh, retirement vehicles, uh, which will pay better uh, over that time. Regular whole life insurance. Uh, anything to do with the stock market or mutual funds. A lot of those, unlike annuities, you can pay off with, um, you can stuff basically with pre-tax monies. So it sounds to me like the purpose of the article is really for this person quoted to drum up some business uh, with a younger demographic. Beyond that, Is there a lot of anxiety 
out there across the land? And does that anxiety touch young people? Yes, it does. You know, a lot's been said about the um, extension of unemployment benefits and uh, how for some people, particularly younger people, they may have been making more with the federal adder to their uh, unemployment benefit than they were when they were working. And that's no doubt true for some, but what's forgotten is that unemployment only lasts so long. Uh, unemployment is not really a long-term benefit. Uh, un- under the unique conditions of the pandemic where these people's jobs were stolen from them by the government. They've extended unemployment to where you can get it for six months or so if you qualify, so through year end. But the better solution is to lift the lockdown, and then people can get back to work, and they can continue with their career. These young people who, uh, for whom unemployment benefits were more lucrative than their actual paycheck, well, in a relatively short period of time, they will be making more money. Um, that's a consequence of starting out at kind of the bottom end of the totem pole in their profession. As they develop more experience and more contacts, they will get better opportunities. And their earnings will outstrip what the unemployment benefits would pay even in this unique situation. But to get there, they got to get back to work. Their skills are atrophying while they're unemployed. And so it does nobody any good to continue to maintain the farce that the pandemic response to COVID-19 must entail the unprecedented shutdown of our economy. It's an idea that is so blatantly stupid that it could only come from government. It just goes to show you how our would-be rulers have no understanding whatsoever of how economics actually works. So, should there be some anxiety? Well, yes. Um, Certainly, I would look at the performance of our baby boomer leadership and begin to question whether anyone in that generation has any sense whatsoever. Not only do they elect these morons, but they follow them. They obey them. When they say, don't leave your house, the boomers don't leave their house. It's it's utter nonsense. So if I were a Gen Zer or a millennial, And looking at the prospect of what will be left to me by these people, I would be very concerned indeed. As a Gen Xer, we have never expected to get anything good from the baby boomers. Those of us in the wave who had baby boomer parents learned that the hard way from the most self-absorbed generation that has yet been produced in American history. So why would we think it would be any different now? This is just prophecy being fulfilled. What should the young do about it? Well, the good news is the young have some time. They're not staring down the barrel of getting ready to retire, and so they can learn a valuable lesson from this pandemic. Hint, that lesson is, don't trust the government. Anything that the government tells you, check for yourself. Anything that the media, which is nothing more than the communication arm of the government at this point, anything that the media tells you, you have to treat, as Soviet citizens used to treat what was printed in Pravda and Izvestia, 
the most misnamed publications since the printing press was developed. Pravda, ironically, means truth, although there was no truth printed in its pages. Izvestia is Russian for news, although there was no news printed within its pages. And so we must read the New York Times, we must view MSNBC, and all the rest, much as they learned to view it. They would read between the lines, and thereby ferret out that which the government didn't want them to know. Because it's never as fully obscured as the propagandists wish it were. Don't trust your government. Don't take what the media tells you at face value. Learn for yourself. And if they follow that advice, then Generation Z and the Millennials will wind up doing just fine, despite the attempt of prior generations to cripple them economically. To take their future away so that they're nothing but slaves supporting the cushy pensions and retirement of older generations. In general, so when we look at it from a values and culture standpoint, one of the things that this pandemic nonsense ought to demonstrate is the value of having savings. People who come from Asian cultures in particular are well aware of this. They've had to deal with a lot of evil and malfeasance and incompetence from their governments. And the best hedge against it is to have a big pile of money squirreled away wherever you can hide it so that when the crisis comes, you have options. That's a lesson that we can learn. Don't buy the latest piece of plastic crap from China when you can save that money, particularly when you can make money on it through the stock market or through savings accounts. Save it. Save as much as you can so that when crises like this come, you are not dependent upon those who would make you slaves. It is a hard thing to do. It requires an adjustment in your values. In my life, I have never had a cool car. Never. Not once. It's because I value the money more than I do having the temporary pleasure of driving a cool car at the inevitable expense of it. Your mileage may vary. There's nothing wrong with being a gearhead and loving loving uh, cars. If that's your thing, that's fine. It doesn't give me the same pleasure it does you, and so I don't invest in it. I've never had the most fashionable clothes. I just haven't. Even when I was in banking and, you know, the bank, the, my colleagues had Hong Kong tailors and yada, 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 I never did. You know, the probably the toniest place that I shopped was Joseph A. Bank. Not very, uh, not very high end, right? But that's because I value fashion less than I do having money in a crisis. And that applies to a lot of things. Whenever we make a decision to buy something, we are valuing that thing, whatever it is, over money. I've never had a McMansion. People whose incomes were far lower than mine had often had much nicer houses. And that was all well and good until the financial crisis hit and their 
adjustable rate mortgage suddenly became a lodestone around their necks financially. But we've never been house poor either, which is good because you never know when you own a home. You never know what's going to happen. And you have to have some money for repairs. And uh, a couple of my houses, we had to replace the roof. One of them, we had to replace the air conditioner system. Those are very expensive propositions. So better to have the money available to do those things than to find yourself having to go in debt, which becomes its own problem, in response. So for the younger generation, and we're seeing some signs, despite the abysmal state of public education in this country, which frankly refuses to teach people anything about handling money, despite that, a goodly number of Gen Zers and Millennials have actually learned some valuable lessons about how to manage their funds and are a bit more frugal, if anything, than other generations have been. Now, there are exceptions to that rule. My God, what they spend on wine and craft beer. But uh, beyond that, they seem less inclined to incurring major, major expenses for things that won't, you know, won't last. They tend to be a little bit more ready to pay for experiences, which isn't a really really a bad investment when you think about it. I mean, experiences are what make a life. So you you will long remember that trip to Bali well after you've lost whatever you bought on it. So I think as we look at stories like this, it's important to recalibrate our values, what it is we want. Money is simply a means to an end. If you can defer spending that money until a time when you really need it, you'll you'll have a lot less anxiety. As hard as it is, especially when you're young and you have needs to do things like furnish an apartment or a home, when you have to buy a vehicle, there are just endless things that you need to spend your money on because you don't have many possessions. But if you can show the discipline then if you can avoid incurring too much debt along the way, then you're going to be just fine in this mess. What you need to watch out for is the people who are on the bubble right now, who are getting ready to retire right now, who have been dealt a very serious blow um, and have some hard choices that they're going to have to make accordingly. This article doesn't care about that because the person trying to sell annuities um, doesn't much care about that, but that's the reality. So hang in there, Gen Z. Hang in there, Millennials. Um, your day's going to come. Hopefully, uh, you'll do better when you're given the reins than prior generations did. Have a great day.